masterpiece from Pulsar. This is an absolute masterpiece from Pulsar. I do not know how the entire package came together to be so well. It's really beyond me. But wow, 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 wow. First things first that I understand is the engine. It's become a lot freer. It's become a lot more capable. I can put down the power whenever I want. 125, 130. Woo! Too amazing. Too amazing. Godly. It's a gift. It's a gift from Pulsar. It's an absolute gift from Pulsar. Wow. A smooth, smooth, smooth engine. This 400 engine is something amazing. I think it has come alive due to the lack of weight. Come alive. So before we get down to the riding dynamics of this bike, let me tell you what's new on the NS400Z. Starting with the 43mm front USDs, the engine frame has been taken from the Dominar directly because it's made to carry a 373cc engine. The all-over weight of the bike has just increased by 10% when compared to the NS200. The rear sprocket has been increased by one tooth which brings it to 46 teeth and the weight distribution of this vehicle is 59 to the front and 41 to the rear. The wheelbase has also been reduced by 12mm over the Pulsar 200 NS and that makes it very, very, very nimble. Finally, it comes with a few modes that seems more or less useless to me. So let me not talk about that. So I had to stop the bike and talk to you about dynamics. It's a Frankenstein monster. That is what I had thought. Like, you know, parts are taken from different places. The engine's from a different place. The whole chassis, as we know, is just from a different place. Things here and there. I thought it would be a complete hodgepodge. But here's the thing. Put it around a corner. And that is when you start realizing how well packaged this NS400Z is. It's a completely different ball game to whatever pulses have come out till now. And this is so compliant around a corner. And it's just, it's just baffling me. I am having a lack of words to actually describe you what the feeling is like. You can put all your weight on the front. You can stop the vehicle nicely. You can use your engine braking if you think that your front brakes are fading. And it will stop. It does not give you reactions that you cannot expect. And the whole, the Bajaj Pulsar is there to kill me sort of an attitude, like when you try to push the limits of the vehicle, has kind of disappeared when it comes to the 400 NS. It's quite shocking. So even if you're going through bad roads or like let's say a rough patch of road, which you have not anticipated and it all comes off suddenly, this will just glide over it. The whole suspension part has been kept on the softer side which allows it to hold in the bumps or take in the bumps without sending all of it to you. And to be honest, if you want a fun-loving motorcycle, I think this is beating the Hero Maverick. Hero Maverick might have the comfort, might be a cruiser, but for 1.8 lakhs, this is a steal guys. This is an absolute, absolute steal. I am myself, I'm shocked by saying that, you know, this whole Frankenstein monster is a really good performer on the road. But I'm going to push it a little more and we are going to find out how it does on a track. Oh, you think all the movement was done? Hell no. If you want a detailed understanding of what the looks are, how does a digital instrument cluster work, what all the attributes are that have gone into this new vehicle, I would suggest you go and see Anand's walk around. He has done a bloody good job at it and he has explained almost everything that has to be known about this Pulsar. What I'm doing is just riding, riding, riding and telling you how it is to ride.
that the Bajaj NS400Z has come to an end. I know, I wish it was a little longer, but it has come to an end. And yeah, I think I'm gonna say what I've said before. Absolutely confused, absolutely mesmerized, and absolutely, you know, taken aback by the entire package of this. But I was astonished when I took it into Lonavla's, you know, Ambi Valley sections, did a lot of corners with it. And it's a lot different than whatever Pulsar I've, you know, ridden before. Let's say the N's, the P's, the D's and the K's or whatever they can come up with iterations. Anything lower than this, I've ridden and I've not liked them at all. But wow, this is a complete game changer. The front end is beautiful, beautiful. Like, I was pelting this motorcycle left, right and centre through corners, through the track. And if you think the front end does not have it, my dear editor, can I, can you please show the overtake again? Please show the overtake. You know how much I relied on the front end to just kill him on the braking zone. I brake so hard, so late, and it was <laughs> it was just rewarding. And I had no problem, you know, putting so much of trust on the front end. And also to power out with the rear end. The rear just kind of follows where the front end goes, and I'm really happy about it. You know, visually, you might say, you know, you, you might have a lot of things to say. Like, you know, the instrument cluster has two different things. Looks from NS from behind. It has vibrations, blah, 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 this, that. It doesn't have parts from, you know, bespoke parts. You can just show fingers to them. Because even if this looks like an NS, it doesn't look like a bad bike now, does it? Enjoy these vibrations, man. Enjoy. There's one day when your kids will ride stupid electric motorcycles and then you're gonna say, oh, I wish there was some vibrations in my life. That is the day when you'll realize. So guys, at the end of the day, I feel this is an amazing product from Bajaj. This is absolutely something you should be buying if you're thinking a bike of under two lakhs. And if you don't like it, not my problem, go buy something slower, something less fun, something, I don't know what. Are we done? I'm going, I'm actually going. You don't believe me, do you? Finally, let me talk about the negatives that this bike has. So when I was pushing it in Ambi Valley, I realized that there was an overheating sign that was continuously coming on the NS400Z. Now, inhibitions with it, but then it came alive, it all came into reality when the engine suddenly switched off. It was not starting and it showed all the signs of an engine overheat, which was quite baffling because I did not use the pulsar so much or so heavily that it would reach to that level. It somehow unlocked another thing called the limp mode where you are not allowed to rev over 4500 rpm to save the engine and also to bring you back home in some form or the other. But if the bike has overeating issues, which I suspect it does, this might be a big point if pulsar does not solve this. Now, I do think this is a solvable issue, but when does Pulsar come up with this solution is something that we'll have to see.